Hey, shout out to Box Rep TV. Yes, <clears throat>All right, guys, uh, we're here with Dre. Dre, what's your full name, man? Andre Yule. Okay, so Dre, tell us tell us a little bit about, about you, man. What's what's special about you, man? Who, who, who are you as a fighter? You know, it's like those are like the, basically the best questions I ever get. You know, who am I? Who am I? You know, I'm just a guy that, that's a father that ended up being able to bring his super violence of craft and turn it into art, mm. into the sport, you know. So okay. That's what I am. So talk to us about that violence, man. Uh, you've had stints with the UFC. You've done team, team combat league. Right now, you're a professional boxer. So what are your plans in this, as a in the future, man? Just speak to us about that. Uh, truth be told, I kind of want to end up touching in like every sport that possible. Like mindset. Granted, uh, you know, I have the mixed martial arts, the boxing, uh, but I also have a background of taekwondo slash karate. So I kind of want to jump into that uh, karate combat. And I'm also even like a person that's, that has fights lined up and bare knuckles. So I kind of want to touch like every sport possible with uh, basically with violence, you know, able to turn that into something. So you just a greedy guy. You, we, can, we can say that. We can sit there and say that. I am definitely greedy wherever the show is and I'm able to bring a show or have the chance to bring a show. I'm 100 percent about it. So like, heck, I'll even jump into hockey. And just to be able to get hired, just Ooh. to punch people. <laughs> just That's punch people me. for the money, huh? There it is. Okay, so UFC, talk to us about that stint right there, man. Talk about the violence. Talk about just your career. How did that, how did that go? And how did that prepare you for Team uh, Combat League? Uh, truth be told, it brought me in front of the world. You know, be able to, one of the most attractive sport was uh, UFC. And people were, eyes were definitely on it. Unless there was like big pay-per-view fights for boxing and everything. But... Uh, my debut was with Hennen Burrell, pound for pound uh, uh, champ back in his time, and I ended up fighting him in his house, Brazil, and so that was like that was in 2018 uh, debut that I made with them. Uh, I ended up still on the show. I ended up putting uh, putting work on the guy. He even came in over six pounds, so it's something legendary for me and the people that do know me. So I ended up putting in the work or the craft of what I need to be shown for people to know that I'm about this. You know, so the preparation for TCL, it was, you know, team combat and everything. It was just the fact is in that I'm used to a crowd. I'm used to bringing in um, people. And at the same time, the people that they feel that are the best and they put up against me, they end up getting shut down or get worked or get knocked out. Either or, I break people's dreams. And that's something that I honestly do. Okay. So I witnessed that personally where you said it's still in the show. Man, watching team combat league, I've seen you grow as a fighter overall. Um you might not have been one of the guys at the very beginning who people had their eyes on, but at the end of the season, I can truly say, man, you caught a lot of people. I've heard polymonology speak on you highly. You've had big knockouts. You've had big shots. I've seen you personally. So talk to us about that, that mindset of stealing the show and just building yourself as a fighter, man. Uh, truth be told, it's just me being me. No matter how you end up looking at it, you have to end up being yourself. And that's like a lot of people have their problems with uh, still in the show or being known or being seen. Uh, my mindset's always been like that. I want to be the main attraction. Uh, I walk in with my cowboy boots. That's not a, a phase. That's actually me being me. I get to dress and do what I want. High shorts, nice has, um, leather black boots with the Reebok sign. Yo. How many people do you end up seeing doing that? Exactly. You don't, right? And then at the same time, me and Polly... Uh, you know, he announced one of my fights in uh, Bare Knuckle, and the first really? time, yeah, it's like crazy. The first time I ever uh, met Polly, I ended up like basically calling him out and asking him a straight, uh, straight up question, and they thought I wasn't going to do it. I told people, I said, because he stated that Manny Packer had no footwork. Right. And I was like, I promise you, the first day I see him, I'm going to end up um, asking him that. And literally, first time we, we sat down at a table and I had the chance to chop it up, first thing came out of my mouth, you really think Manny Pacquiao has no footwork? He broke it down for being an expert because, you know, I grew up watching Polly. So for him to be able to be there and announce my fights and, you know, and able to chop it up with them, you know, I got to put on a show. For some, somebody like that that I grew up watching my whole time and, you know, was a fan no matter how he ended up looking at right. it. You know, it's this little certain things like that. And then eventually I'm going to get the chance to honestly perform in front of Roy Jones. And that's my biggest fan, like, you know. But right now it's just about putting my name out there and basically continue to build up because people know me, but I want the world to know me. And I always state this, I want to be worldwide.
Okay, so you spoke about the Polly Malignaggi, the Roy Jones. Who are the other guys that you've looked up to? Because I'm going to be honest with you. Um, a guy with a great smile, but when he gets in the ring, it's it's a different Drake. It's a killer in there. I'm, I'm, I've seen it. I've seen it. So talk to me about that. Who are the guys that you've looked up to that inspired that type of mentality? Uh, I want to sit there because I ended up saying this uh, a few weeks ago. It's like a blend of Bruce Lee and because uh, that's something I really look up to. Because growing up, I ain't gonna lie, that was all that was on my show. It was Yo. just like that, uh, like Asian work of trying, you know, from, you know Jackie Chan, you know, and I had Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee was the, was the guy. And then at the same time, I'm watching Roy Jones, and you know Tyson was doing his thing. You know, I'm a big fan of Tyson. Uh, you know, so it's like when they lose, I lose. It was <laughs> kind of right. like one of those moments. But uh, but watching them and growing up watching it. I ended up developing a style like you have a Roy Jones and Bruce Lee blended together. You get me, like, right. you know. Uh, but from that, I took my time. I ended up, uh, you know, like tweaking things, like you know, like hands down. I know the when everything is partially done, I'm coming back for season two of uh, you know Team Combat and everything. Mm. But I know there's a other moment where UFC. I have like two more fights with them, so they I might end up breaching back into that moment. But it's all about molding the best fighter. I want to be the best fighter, so when I end up uh, passing it on to my son, uh, both of my boys, that they're able to end up seeing the craft of art where they don't just think that something's very violent, it's actually arts, like, you know? Because at the end of the day, I turn everything I do into art, mm. everything, you oh. know? So when I look up to them, it's them placing their, you know, their vision of what they see and they put it out there and everybody looked up to it. I sit there and seen the art. So now it's my chance to honestly build and throw out and pass out art as well. Got you. So from what I'm getting at is you really live and buy, die by that samurai type of attitude, that warrior mentality, man. So Dre, so with the Team Combat League, how has that experience been overall? Just what was your expectations going into it? And now that the season's finally over, what is your end note expectation or end note um thoughts all right so in thoughts one it was fun like i can end up telling you that uh the fact is in able to build and form a family mm. no matter how you end up looking at it and you get to end up seeing everybody else's mindset because you got to think about the team is built with 18 18 fighters and then you have up to two to three coaches all right um these, these are a lot of personalities these are a lot of personalities and this is just our team and then when we go out to go meet the other teams to fight them or, you know, shake it up or hand, you know, how you end up placing it. You end up seeing how people uh, move and uh, kind of like in those direction. And I end up saying, and not only I said that the other teams said it, the uh, league and owners, they all believe it, that Dallas was the much fun, you know, the fun that brought in the excitement right. to the team, you know, or to the league. And that's something that we end up doing. Uh, we all had our own little things and I had our own little energy and then, you know, uh, granted that some people end up swaying in different directions where, you know, later on you end up seeing it'll be uh, the Ninja the ninja Turtles, the four of us, uh, we end up doing work, you know, my boy AJ, Dion, and Jennifer, and then myself, you know, we put in work. Uh, and that's just honestly how the mindset is, so able to, able to build something and they brought that together and for us to be able to perform in the first season, you gotta think about that, you know. Right. Or, we had the chance to draw in the fans and you know and more fans we draw in the season two will be bigger and better you know right so everything that we end up doing is just honestly to place that for the people and for the fans and you know and for me to honestly do what i honestly do best i put on shows my teammates we put on shows and we get one round to do it maybe two and you know and then at the same time we're fighting the best of the best or the best that whoever they can find exactly you know so at the end of the day that's just how it is Okay. And I'm not a guy that's not even supposed to be here. You got to think about this. I'm a UFC fighter, ex-vet. And, you know, and I worked my way into the whole sport. And they think I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to get shut out. They didn't want me. The whole nine. They didn't want to see me. But then I come up in there and I, I give them a knockout. Then the next time I give out a boxing lesson and then another boxing lesson slash a butt whooping or ass whooping. And then the next one, another ass whooping. It doesn't matter how you look at it. A guy that ain't supposed to be there came here and ended up still in the show. Exactly. So... With that being said, you're a pioneer of Team Combat League Season 1. Now, with your mm -hmm. career also in the UFC, do you see a Team Combat League type format working in MMA? Uh, definitely. I definitely end up seeing that. Uh, they can end up building and making something very fun with it. You know, man, heck, I wouldn't mind uh, honestly being in there running some things, you know. 
put me as the coach or the fighter. I mean, look, I could be the coach slash fighter. Get it any way, yeah. Get it any way I can, just to be able to be around it. Uh, but they have a chance to be able to do that, and I'm actually happy they did it with boxing. You know, so it kind of like draws people in. And I think if they did do it in the MMA life style or the status, they would. Uh, it would end up building. It right. would end up uh, blowing up even bigger. Okay. So it'll build the team boxing and slash uh, the team uh, MMA. It will end up drawing all the fans that need to be drawn in. Got you. So, Dana White, there's your answer right there, man. Uh, <laughs> now, let's talk about boxing, bro. Current event, Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence. What weight class right now are you at? You were 147, correct, for the Team Combat League? So, you're fitting into that 147-pound frame. Let's talk about Earl Spence. Um, Earl Spence is known for being a big guy. He's talked about moving up to 154. How do you think him having to make weight 147, 147 over and over and over again uh, will affect this fight. Does he, do you, how do you think that goes? How do you think that weight drain may take place at, and to affect this fight? Uh, truth be told, for him, I don't, I don't think it's going to bother him because his style and the fact is in that like, he's very disciplined. You got to, like, people, like, I ended up by being out here in Dallas, I ended up getting, like, more feedback on the man, you know, and which one, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Earl and, and uh, Terrence as well. Uh, Truth be told, I didn't want them to fight. That's just me. Really? But at the same time, I know that's a sport, and that's the, you know, one got the belt, they got to get the belt, they got to figure out who's the best. I get that, you know, but, uh, yeah, so getting the background on uh, Earl and everything, the dude's very, uh, you know, straight to the point. He's a hard worker. I you ever look at it, and he's very disciplined to when it comes to, you know, certain crafts uh, or, you know, to his craft. Uh, his style is honestly... It's actually made and bred it for him so that he doesn't have to do extra stuff, you know. And I'm already getting attacked. That's all good, man. <laughs> but yeah, so I got yeah. So you know, so his style for that is not as bad as most people th end up thinking about it. So him cutting weight to 47, his style it's going to be like a slow build up, but he starts out fast, but he ends up micromanaging it in the right position of when to be explosive, when not to be explosive, when to add pressure, when not to add pressure. So it's not like, uh, like argument's sake for me. If I drop down to 35, that's already a lot, right? right. And to so the fact is in that my style is very moving. I'm moving, I'm here and there, uh, type of deal, give you different um, angles, different directions and stuff like that. That is, that's basically like life draining. That is draining from somebody that comes from 160 down to 35. You know, I don't know where Earl's coming from or what weight class that he's coming or how much he weighs before he drops down, but his style is very more that shelled and pushed forward. Mm. You're not losing a lot of energy like that that most people think. So he's able to keep that uh, that pace for a while. Gotcha. You know, so now it'll be a different story if we're talking Terrence. If he was coming from like 180 or 170, he had to drop all that weight, you know, down to 47. Now that would be more questionable Yo. because his style factors in that he switches up, the factors in that he goes more orthodox to um, southpaw, one side is where he's being a, a bully, the other side he's being a boxer. That is a lot of styles, and that takes a lot of stamina to constantly keep switching up. Gotcha. But if anybody's able to do it, it's definitely Terrence, you know? Yeah. So this is what makes that fight very much exciting and basically we want people, or that why it draws so many people in because it's like, what's going to honestly break first, or if we're going to see a break, what's going to end up happening. So, you know, I'm excited to watch it. Okay, so talk to me about that breaking. You said that that's the mentality that you try to bring into the ring, try to break a guy. Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford both had that mentality of, man, I'm trying to break you. How do you see that fight going? See, right there, it's 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 definitely going into being the wheel. Uh, and if you have to end up placing it, it kind of just... That, that one's a tough one. I know. I know. That's a tough one. Everybody's <laughs> like going back and forth, and I know I'm just supposed to sit there and just sit there and say it. But I'm going for a draw. I'm sorry, y'all. Ah. <laughs> I'll sit there and say it for a draw because I like them both. I'm not going to lie, you know. Because uh, it's just like it comes down to like any given um, day. Like it could yep. be the fact that Terrence is off today. And then, you know, uh, Earl's will honestly, uh, put, you know, pushes them over. Right. Or it could be Earl off today, and then it gives out uh, Terrence over there, you know. It's like we both seen both of the fighters hurt before, and we both seen them honestly, you know, work their way over that with a smile on their face. You right. know? And the fact is that when we end up finding out when they're behind on the uh, scorecards, what type of attitude they gave and what they do, finish the fight. So it's like they're like brothers in, in so many ways, you know. It's just now it's, it's like it's like a samurai versus a, 
uh, a funky uh funky ninja if you want to go ahead and say a that. ninja turtle man there you go ninja turtle so it's like you know and I'll, I'll leave that up to y'all to guess who's the ninja turtle and right. uh you know and who's the samurai but either or they're both tight because like me i am like you know you end up stating like the samurai way i'm tatted up all the way up like japanese style but african um, culture brought in you know uh so definitely live in that like samurai way of a warrior way type of deal and i can tell you that it gets jobs done, but we need a little bit of spice on, on it, you know, and that's where the Ninja Turtle kicks in, so boom. Right. Yeah, you know, elevation. Well, Elevate. we got Andre Yule here, man, and uh, like you said, he gets the job done. We're looking forward to you seeing more from uh, UFC Team Combat League, possibly Team Combat League Season 2. I hope you're a part of that, man. Right. I guarantee you will be a bright, shining star, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Shout out to Rocks Rep TV. Book and El Charab Borek TV. Telemundo!